<clears throat> Hello, Tim. Uh, Barry Barron here in the colonies across the pond, and I'm here to show you some of these uh, really, really fine examples of the Holland's work. Um, I'll go through each one of them really quick and give you a little background on them. Uh, it's, uh, it's really, I guess your English breakfast is already over with, but I think uh, you'll be able to stand it. <laughs> Um, this one uh, is about Congress deciding whether or not we should be using uh, and spending money for infrastructure after the Second World War. That was the decision the American public wanted to do, and, and uh, Holland had done a very good work uh, on uh, an, uh, kind of a uh, U.S. Congress personification, an old man there, and making decisions on whether or not what was going to be done first in America. This is about the 1951, roughly. Handling this carefully. Uh, this one is about the Army Corps of Engineers deciding whether or not um, they're going to change the course of the Mississippi River. And this represented old man Mississippi and the new course was uh, this uh, woman uh, in a nice car. And uh, the decision was made only partly. Uh, I have some information on that I'll send you. And this is the old, old way of people not wanting to change anything. You can see the how they, uh, he personified that also. But this is a nice illustration. It talks about American uh, restructuring our uh, waterways, huh? This is one about uh, Keith Offer uh, running for vice president with, uh, with uh, the 52 election. Um, Adley Stevenson was the elected president. To be, he was kind of waiting in the wings at the convention ready to be uh, selected and this is a kind of a little drawing that shows that he's just sitting there on an island the island of uh, you know the june convention little little boiling pot there um but uh, it's a good illustration he's really good at caricatures and so uh i guess truman was wondering what was going on he's hiding in the bushes over there but this is a good piece and it's, it's pretty well done <clears throat> There was an old lady who lived in her shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. The mother, mother goose tail kind of personified the uh, um, um, lack of space in schools after the war. Baby boomers were plentiful. I was one of them. And uh, this is a drawing of an old shoe and a lot of kids in school um, uh, not knowing where to go. They're playing outside. And they had a little lacking space, I think. Uh, you can see some nice drawings and illustrations. He really captured the moment with uh, young children there in this photo. There's a school marm there, and I think that's a, a good political piece as far as the times. During the Marshall Plan, where money was being used to rebuild uh, Europe, uh, a lot of the people were misusing the money, and they didn't care who was in power in America at that time. Uh, this is, uh, uh, represents those people here in, uh, in Europe. And uh, the plan, they still wanted to carry, the Democrats wanted to carry the plan out pretty well. And uh, he was changing administration. And, and so Stevenson and Eisenhower, either one of them, were still ready to take on the plan to keep it going. Um, kind of a mixed bag of how the money was being spent. But uh, I think you can get a good idea about how that is. Uh, now that's done. Very well done piece here. Um, good characters. Old tail gunner Joe, Joe McCarthy, when his uh, purges of the communists in the in the 50s, uh, early in Congress, was looking to get more and more of them out of the government, which they were, a few of them were there. And this is sort of a, a representation of McCarthy looking towards St. Patrick, uh, who got the snakes out of Ireland. You can get snakes out of Ireland, we can get communists out of our government. So this is a, a very good uh, representation of that, uh, of that time and looking, looking around, kind of an allegory on, on Joe McCarthy, people who loved and hated him, and hated him in all, all levels. He went even into Hollywood to get rid of, uh, and get rid of uh, communists. There's a great writer, Trumbull, in Hollywood who was a avowed communist and uh, the government was after him also. This one is actually dedicated to my father 
and it was to my fellow criminal uh, with hugs and kisses, Ed Holland. So there's a personalized message on the bottom of it after it was done. This was a scandal, don't hear nothing, don't see nothing, don't say nothing. It involved American, uh, the D.C. police force in Washington, D.C. Congress was responsible for, fund for funding D.C. And there was a big uh, drug scandal involving the police chief and some of the people who worked in that uh, capacity under that uh, administration. Another scandal about selling, uh, selling uh, boats to uh, communist countries. It was a law passed there and uh, someone was uh, left holding the bag, uh, uh, a fellow named uh, Morris. And he, uh, Humboldt Morris, I think is his name. And uh, he was a philanthropist and he had a lot of money and he was buying and selling tankers. And uh, somebody in the administration did a deal, got money from it, and then it left him holding the bag on the problem with the legal end of this thing. But this is a, a piece on that. And you can see some good details in the characterization of the administration rowing away from the problem. UMT, Univer I think it's called the Universal Military Training that was trying to be mandatory for American young men after the Second World War to maintain the protection of the country. And they really didn't want to do it because the Cold War was coming on and a different political scene was, um, was evolving. And so Congress uh, kind of buried the whole idea. And there's the burial of the, the whole concept. Uh, I think uh, there's some information I'm going to send you on that as well uh, in an email. And that's old man Congress. We've seen him before, right? <laughs> Dean Agenson was involved uh, in the bombing uh, of the administration of uh, uh, the Yulan River or uh, during the Korean War, and uh, he had apologized to the British about what the Americans were doing. The British were bringing in troops, 100,000 100, troops, I believe, but really didn't care too much of what happened in America where all those American soldiers died. He was just standing in there kind of, uh, you know, thumbing them. Uh, I, I, the politics was very bad then, and uh, this is the only piece I have that really shows a, a little bit of a stain here on the side, which I think can be removed. It's a ink that looks like it's, I think it's water soluble. And of course, restoring, restoring some of these pieces uh, might be uh, something you could do. They are still nice. All of them are frameable, basically. Um, but there you are. Wondering where world peace was ever going to come, kind of left uh, left at the altar at the church uh, as a bride waiting for her uh, answer on world peace. And there's the there's the uh, world peace uh, uh, personification uh, as a minister hoping that peace was going to be solved in Korea, the Korean War, and they were in the second year of that they wouldn't come to the table. So everybody was concerned about that. Uh, truce talks that started years ago never really came to fruition. There's a little note, note on that. It's a good piece. Again, infrastructure, problems with water in America, and they were blaming Truman's administration for misusing money and taxes and not giving them to the proper use of uh, our water supply in America. And this was also a political scandal. Talk about scandals, this is a big one. Uh, Truman, uh, his administration was being paid off by people with mink, coat, with mink coats and refrigerators and stuff like that. Um, uh, a lot of corruption was involved in that administration. And try, I think Pendergrass may have been involved with this one, I think, uh, just before the elections. And Truman was worried how it would affect his side of the political party. So he's having nightmares and he's got these uh, vicuña or uh, minks jumping over a, over a uh, barrier there, uh, counting sheep would be counting minks, huh? Mink coats. Joe Stalin got involved in the uh, Korean War. He said he wouldn't, and he did. These are the storm war, uh, the storms of war back there. The communists uh, have written in blood that they said that they are neutral, and he's got a bloodied sword. 
hypocrite as that he was, and uh, you can see uh, how that was done. This is Uncle Sam here, of course, not believing anything that the communists had said. Nice piece. It's got some festooning here, stars and stripes, and it was kind of a nice, quick piece, I think, talking about how the communists were getting involved, Russia getting involved with the Korean conflict. American workers worked hard, so hard that they wouldn't have time to get out, and uh, vacations were a big deal then, and it got so bad that even the fish wanted them to go to a fishing and, and enjoy the, uh, the relax the uh, time away from uh, heavy workloads. And there's an American worker down there under the water, and there's a fish on top, kind of a reverse rolls thing. And this is a very nicely done piece. It's got a half tone. Uh, like uh, effect. I don't know how that's applied, but it's small dots. I've seen it done before, and it's some sort of transfer, but it worked really well. And this is a real clean piece, and this is one of the better pieces he did. Pendergrass administration. Uh, Pendergrass was almost like an Al Capone kind of guy, and his brothers were involved in, in Congress and uh, in the Senate, and deeply involved with Truman, who was a kind of a pawn in Pendergrass's Missouri operation. Well, there's a big drug deal thing going on that lasted forever in the 50s, into the 50s. Uh, and uh, it's personified by vultures. This is uh, a drug, uh, drug dope rings, as said, that were um, surrounding the administration's Senate, U.S. Senate. Pendergrass was a senator then, I think. Uh, but Truman was involved with this also. So uh, there's a Prisoner's uniform. <laughs> Mother's Day, real simple. Honoring our mother, a debt that we cannot uh, be paid back. It's uh, thank you, mother, and it's a simple piece. Very nicely done. The last one, the best one, um, is the um, Douglas MacArthur one, where his hands were tied by the UN, and uh, Harry Truman didn't want him to speak out. Uh, he was going to invade uh, <clears throat> China with Chiang Kai-shek and fight the uh, communists there, uh, Mao Zedong. Um, but uh, Truman didn't want to have to get into any more wars, of course. And of course, they ended up 45 million Chinese being massacred after Mao's uh, takeover of China. But this is a, a, a very, very good piece. This piece is run twice, I understand. And a 10-star extra, 10 times a day, the Washington Times Herald, my father was the art director of, used to publish there locally in town. They'd change the face of the paper 10 times a day. Only that and the Chicago Tribune did that where uh, uh, Ed Holland had worked before. And he took time off and worked uh, in Washington for a few years and knew my father real well. They used to uh, eat, drink beer together and eat hard-shelled crabs here in America. I remember that, a little bit of that. I was very, very young though. I was uh, maybe uh, six, seven years old, but I remember him. He's married. He was married to an American Indian. Uh, I knew that. But um, Holland, this is the best piece that I have, I think, as far as historical, and uh, had a lot of offers for it already. But I'm holding on, and we'll talk about it later. Okay, Tim, and I'll be sending you emails and. Uh, um, uh, details about it, and we'll talk later on, okay? Thank you. Over and out.